Algebra 1, Final Exam Guided Review 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these into like one video for every two or three problems uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I figured it might make it easier if you just want to like check in on how to do a particular problem. It might make it easier for you to find that problem because you can go to the video that has that problem. And then at that point, you're just skimming through only two or three problems. The other thing is with that weird lag thing that my recorder keeps doing, I figured uh, it's less likely to do it with a shorter video, I think. And then if it does do it, it'll be easier for me to re-record. It won't take as much time to re-record a short video instead of a long video. So here we go. I am planning to do numbers one through three in this one. All right, so this is um, algebra one. Eh, I don't need to write that. I've been writing that each time. This is guided final exam, final exam, guided review. I won't take the time to rewrite this each time. Two, and then we're going to do numbers one through three. Okay, so number one is solve by factoring. And here's what we are solving. We're solving x squared equals 14x. All right. Solve by factoring. So whenever you need to solve by factoring, you need to start out with equals zero. So we got to get everything on one side. So I'm going to start out uh, subtracting. So we're taking our original thing equals 14x. And we're going to subtract 14x from both sides. And what that'll give me is that'll give me x squared minus 14x equals zero. Yay, I have equals zero. Now I need to do some kind of factoring. And the first thing to check for is, is there a greatest common factor that you can factor out? Because uh, the, the goal is to get, you know, chunk times chunk where each chunk is at most has an x to the first. Uh, the, you don't have any x squareds left because at that point it's nice and easy to solve. So I see that each term has an x in it. So I can factor out an x. So that gives me x times x squared over x is x. Negative 14x over x is minus 14 equals 0. Cool. I have a factor times a factor equals 0. So I can set each factor equal to 0. So that gives me x equals 0. So that's that one. Or x minus 14 equals zero. So this one is already solved for x, so then this one becomes x equals positive 14, because I added 14 to both sides, and there we go. I solved it. Uh, if you went back and checked, you would plug in zero to both sides, and zero squared is zero equals 14 times zero. Zero does equal zero, and then 14, 14 squared is the same thing as 14 times 14, so both of those check out. All right, that was number one. Number two, also, well, this one is not solved. This is just factor. And here's what we are factoring. xy uh, plus 2x plus 8y plus 16. So we don't have an equal sign here. So we can't get like what x equals, what y equals, because we're not starting with an equal sign. So all we can do is we can get this grouped and, you know, as the instructions say, factored. So first check to see, is there a greatest common factor? And no, because the leading one, the number is a one, and one and 16 only have a one in common. The, the final term here doesn't have an X or a Y. So, but then I look and I see, oh, there are four chunks. Four chunks, I factor by grouping. So let's take the first two, so I'm going to, yeah, factor this by grouping. So I'm going to take the first two and look for what they have in common. Well, they have an x in common. So then when I factor an x out of the first term, I get a y. When I factor an x out of the second term, I get a plus 2. That looks almost like a 7. There we go. And what can I factor out of the second, out of the last two terms? I can factor an 8 out. So we have plus 8 times... 8y over 8 is just y, plus 16 over 8 is 2. 
And yay, I have a y plus 2 and a y plus 2. So I can factor y plus 2 out of everything. So I get a y plus 2 times y plus 2 over, so the whole big first term now, uh, when I factor out y plus 2, I'm just left with the x. And the whole second big term now, when I factor out the y plus 2, I'm left with an 8. And that is my answer. You can always check your answer by multiplying it out and seeing if it takes you back to what you started with. y times x is xy. Uh, y times 8 is 8y. There's that there. 2 times x is 2x. And then 2 times 8 is 16. All right. And number 3. Number 3 is solve by factoring. Solve by factoring. And what do we have? We have x squared minus 6x equals 27. So again, with solving by factoring, we need to get everything on one side and then equals 0. So I need to subtract 27 from both sides. So that will give me x squared minus 6x minus 27 equals 0. Now I notice I have three terms. I have an x squared and x an x squared term, an x term, and a constant. And I note that the x squared term is a 1x squared. So when that's the case, I can just take this constant, this negative 27, and I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to be negative 27 and add to be negative 6. Well, let's see. 27 is 9 times 3. I want them to add to be a negative number. So I can do a negative 9 times a positive 3. Negative 9 times positive 3 is negative 27. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. And because this is a 1x squared kind of problem, I can go straight into my... I can use these. Sorry, I keep bumping that and scrolling or zooming a little bit. Okay. Uh, I can use these numbers directly in and go x minus 9 times x plus 3 equals 0. Now I can take each factor and set it equal to 0. So I can say x minus 9 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. And this one, x equals 9. And this one, x equals negative 3. And we could go back in and check those, and they would check out uh, with your original problem. Even just like a quick glance at our original problem here, using x equals 9. 9 squared is 81 minus 6 times 9. 6 times 9 is 54. 81 minus 54 would give us 27. And uh, same thing would work out for negative 3. Okay, those are the first three problems. And that'll do it for this video. See you next time.